We're studying Wayshower, a new view of Jesus. We're putting on different glasses and we're putting on different eyes and we're seeing Jesus in a new way. We're calling him our Wayshower, which means Savior, Christ, Lord, King, and God. This week, we're looking at the truth that we are God's body, that God has no physical form, uh, but God is manifesting as us. We are God manifested in the flesh, just like Jesus was. Today, we're on day number 41, and we're talking about the ears of God. Come on, touch your ears this morning. You know, touch your toes, touch your, touch your ears this morning, and just affirm uh, the ears of God. Our scripture for today, our backdrop scripture, is Mark uh, chapter 8, verses 14 through 21. Our verse of the day is Psalm 17 and verse number 6. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear unto me and hear my speech. Again, that's Psalms verse 17, uh, chapter 17 and verse number 6. Our denial is that spirit does not have physical ears. Spirit does not have physical ears. Affirmation, my ears are the ears of God. Come on, affirm that my ears, your ears, our ears are the ears of God. Our kingdom principle for today is divine order. That means everything is happening exactly the way that it's supposed to. There's absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, we align our minds and our hearts with the divine order of God. All right, today our subject is I love you enough to listen. Come on, affirm that I love you enough to listen. One more time, I love you enough to listen. Um, and there's a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is a physiological thing, whereas listening requires the engagement of the soul, of the heart, of the mind. And so today, our subject is I love you enough to listen. And sometimes all people need us to do is just to be able to listen to them. The answers that people desire are already on the inside of them. Because remember, they created the question. So they also create the answer. And the answer is inside of us. And all we need sometimes is just a sounding board, just somebody to talk to, to be able to share what it is that we're thinking, what it is that we're feeling. And I know I'm an external processor. I process out loud. The more I talk about a situation, the clearer I get. Um, and so people in my life, I'm grateful for all the sounding boards in my life, for all the people who allow me to talk things out with them and work things out because it is in the talking that I'm able to hear myself. And so when you're able to listen to a person, that is a gift. That is a gift of love. That is a gift of God to be able to really listen to someone. And so I'm asking you the question today, do you love the people in your life enough to be able to listen to them? Amen. To be able to listen. Pulling point number one is to listen without judgment. Can you listen and just hear what a person has to say without judging them, without telling them they're right, without telling them wrong? I'm just here to listen to you. I'm just here to let you get it all out. I'm here to allow you to purge. And sometimes people just need to get it out. And so when they need to, us to listen, the pulling point number one is that we're listening without judgment. I'm not condemning you. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm not trying to make you feel ashamed. I'm just listening with the ears of love because the ears of love are the ears of God. And so therefore I listen without judgment. I'm not here, you know, to say you're right. I'm not here to say you're wrong. I'm just here to listen. I'm listening with the ears of God. So therefore I'm hearing you this morning uh, with God's ears. I'm hearing you with the ability to be able to listen without judgment, but just to be able to hear you. How many times have you been trying to get something Something out, trying to tell somebody something and they cut you off and start telling you what's right and telling you what's wrong. You don't feel love in that. You don't feel heard in that. And sometimes what people need is just to feel heard, to feel listened to, and to feel understood. Pulling point number two, uh, two, that I'm listening to you without advice. I do you love them enough to listen without advice? Sometimes we feel that when people are talking to us, 
Is that they um, is that we that they want us to give the answer? That we want they want us to resolve the situation? That they desire for us to tell them what to do? And sometimes people again just need to get it out. So are you able to listen to, to the person without giving them advice, without telling them what to do? Let me tell you one thing about giving people advice. When you tell people what to do, because remember, they already know what to do. It's already inside of them. When you tell people what to do, and I tell people there's no such thing as good advice. I'm going to say it again. There is no such thing as good advice. I'm going to say it one more time. There is no such thing as good advice. Because if you give them, if you tell them something and it doesn't work out, then you become the blame. See, I did what you told me to do, and this is what happened. And so they're upset with you because you told them what to do, and what you told them didn't work out. And then if you tell them what to do, and it works out, people can become dependent on you. And every time they got a situation, instead of going into the stillness, and instead of going into the silence, instead of going within themselves, and really, you know, uh, being clear within what it is they're supposed to do, they are listening to you. So instead of building a relationship with God, they keep building a relationship with you. Instead of going within, um, they just depend on you. Every time they have a situation, a circumstance, they call you, well, let me call someone so you know they can give the best advice and they're going to tell me exactly what to do. I'm telling you, just listen. They already know. And then sometimes we get mad when we give people advice and they don't do what we told them to do. We get upset. Because we were uh, giving advice and we feel personal. They didn't listen to what it is that we told them to do. I know I've been there. Anybody ever been there where you gave people the best advice you could and after all the advice you gave them, they still did what they wanted to do anyway and then it didn't turn out and then they came back to you, you know, wanting you to comfort them and you had to go beyond, you know, the I told you so's. Come on now, y'all can be honest. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some heart. Give me some love. You had to go beyond the I told Hold you souls, go beyond, you should have listened to me, and just allow yourself to be there for them. Um, and so, advice, stay away from giving people advice. You know, just ask questions and ask people, you know, what is it that you're thinking? What is it that you're feeling? What are your options? What are the consequences or the ramifications if you choose this, if you choose that? But do not tell people what to do. Draw, ask them questions and allow the answer to be drawn out. Allow them to be able to talk to you without you giving them advice. I love you enough to listen, pulley point number one, without judgment. I love you enough to listen without giving advice. Pulley point number two. Pulley point number three. I love you enough to listen without comparing. Um, because many times when people are sharing with us something, we feel like, you know, oh, child, that ain't nothing. They're hungry children um, all over the world, and there are people in the streets, and people. And so instead of really listening to what they're saying, we start comparing their situation to our situation. Oh, I went through something just like that. Um, or we start trying to make them feel better by telling them a situation that's worse than what it is that they're experiencing, but not really listening to them. And so I'm telling you this morning, listen. Listen without giving advice. Listen without judgment. Listen without comparing because that is not helping the person to feel better. They still feel what they feel even though you've given them your situation and how you came out of it. You're not them. They're not you. And even though it may look similar, there's a different person having that experience. So don't compare your situation. Don't cut them off and start telling them your story. Allow them to work it out for themselves. Listen to them and allow them to resolve it for themselves, to come to the answer that brings them peace. Um, and it's so important, it's so important for us to be able to listen to people because remember, our ears are the ears of God. And so people feel listened to, they feel heard, and they're able to get to the answer that they need for their soul's unfoldment. They're able to get to the answer that they desire that's going to bring them peace. And so I'm saying today, I love you enough to listen. I love you enough, pulley point number one, to listen without judging. Pulley point number two, I love you enough to listen without giving advice. Pulley point number three, I love you enough to listen without comparing your situation to mine or anybody else, but to actually be with you in the situation, to actually hear your heart, to hear your pain without advising, without, because when people start telling you and comparing, they're really trying to make you feel better. But it doesn't make the feel person feel better. It makes them feel not heard. So just listen. 
Listen with the ears of love. Listen without judgment. Listen without advice. And listen without comparing. I love you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of the Daily Download. Today, I invite you to just listen to people. Just allow them to talk. Allow them to get it out because your ears are the ears of God. I love you so much. God bless you. Share this on your page with someone today and be open to just hear and listen to someone today because somebody needs to feel heard. All right, until tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., I don't know what you call them, but I call them Wayshore, my example of what it means to be fully human and fully divine.